we have a new camera. I, I've gotten a new camera set up here. So it look. I'm hoping this looks considerably better than the other one. Because uh, but previously I was using this, which is a Logitech Brio. It is a 4K webcam. And the problem with it is, and I think everybody will be able, who has a cell phone or a smartphone will understand this, it um, digital zoom. Really? You take pictures with your phone. When you zoom, when you zoom in with a regular zoom, like an actual built-in magnifier on your camera, you zoom into something, you're making you're pick, blowing it up with a magnifying glass. When you do a digital zoom, you're telling the computer, to make things bigger. And what it does is it just makes things bigger, but the pixels are all blocky. Oh, yeah, it just pixelates on you. Yeah. And that's part of the problem with this, because this is a 4K picture, and it was getting the entire room, all of it. But I just need this one little part. And yeah. I had to use the digital zoom, and it was screwing up the green screen. And it's a nice camera. I'm probably going to put it up on eBay, because I have no more use for it. Um, but what I did was I swapped it out for my DSLR. I have got my uh, DSLR connected to my computer. I had to do a little bit of hackery to it to make it output HDMI properly, but it does. And now, now the green screen looks so much nicer. I think it's, it's much cleaner division. It looks like a green yeah, screen. Yeah, you don't have that weird fuzzy pixelated line around you. I don't. So it, it looks better. It looks a little more like you know. So I, know, I don't know what all those letters mean, but it looks good. It looks like I actually know what I'm doing. Which, if I can fool you, I can fool anyone. Um. <laughs> I'm not that hard to fool, man. Thumb <laughs> with one button, <laughs> one button. My mouse, one button. <laughs> Dan was like, "Yeah, I don't know how to turn your computer on." I'm like, "It's one button." Uh, yeah, so eventually Macintosh is going to die, <laughs> and you're going to have to move on to something else, Tara. We passed by the Apple Store in a mall the other day, and I was marveling at like it was this enormous <laughs> Apple Store. And one little table in the back with six de desktop computers. That was it. Yep. Rest of the store was like tablets and phones. Yep. That's that's what's happening. They uh, they don't want to do this anymore. They they just want to do tablets and phones. Did you see they they finally updated the Mac Pro and it almost seemed like they did it as a grudge because the base price of the thing is something like six thousand dollars. Yeah. Which is twice as much as the base price of the previous one. It's like, but fine, you wanted Mac. one here! $6,000, suck it! But I love my iMac. I know you do, Tara, but... It's pretty, and it's, it's easy, and it has a, a chiclet keyboard. But but now Steve but I can't is, fucking type on PC keyboards. You can, you, you can keep your keyboard. There's no reason yeah, I can't... I don't know how people type on these big, ridiculous, cumbersome keyboards. I love my cumbersome keyboard with the clicky Oh my bar. god, I make so many typos typing on a PC. When I worked at the cat shelter, everything was PC. And anytime I had to type, I was like, it felt like all my fingers were swollen. <laughs> like I, I was got, like Shrek trying got, to type. Got my nice mechanical keyboard here with the custom keys on it. It's nice. Custom keycaps. It all looks cool. It's cool. Awful. I want my chiclet keyboard. <sighs> <laughs> On this, we just will not agree. We will not, but I, I think time is going to... Actually, you know, technically time is going to make fools of us both, because eventually both we, both Microsoft and Apple are going to completely implode, because they're being run like crap. And then we're both going to have to figure out Linux together, so it's going to suck. Ugh. But then we'll just have chips in our heads. Wouldn't that... You say that, but... Mm, might be like two years from now, like, crap, how do I freaking load Linux on this thing? You'll just Skype call me by blinking? Yeah, there you go. I oh. do a show from my bed. All right, let's 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 get the intro a-rolling, because we have stuff tonight. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, being like all sorts of horrible stuff. Here for a segment we like to call What the Fuck Is Wrong With You? And, um... We're going to start off tonight with that lovely intersection of holidays and brands and social media. It, it always seems like if you if you give a brand like a, a little bit of a push toward, toward a holiday, and you're like, hey, you, you should try this. It, it just promote this thing. And they do it and they do it wrong. 
they will get it wrong. Always. Yeah. Um, well, uh, airport in uh, in surprisingly enough, Vancouver. So this was Canadian. Um, tried something for Valentine's Day that went horribly, horribly wrong. Don't tell people to do this. YVR apologizes for encouraging travelers to hit on their seatmates. No. Yes. Ah, uh, you are boarding a flight. This insulated tweet from the popular YVR airport account began. You get to the next row and notice your seatmate is very attractive. How do you spark up a flirty conversation with them? Drop your best line for a rating out of five. Best answer would a pair of tickets to the Vanacqua for date night. Women hate that, said several individuals. Do. Yeah, um, look, I, I get you the whole romance and Valentine's Day and trying to play into it. And yes, I get that. Okay. But not everywhere is date time. Women just want to be able to do shit. <laughs> yes. We just want to be able to do shit. We want to go to the drugstore. We want to get on a plane. We want to go to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. We want to get fucking wasted without having to worry about some dude rubbing his dick all over us. <laughs> I mean, you're not Nin wrong. 95% of the time, every woman in your life could give a rat fuck about your penis. I know that's hard to hear. I know. <laughs> because 95% of the time, y'all seem to be thinking about your penis. But we're not. We don't care. What? I, this is not hard to get, guys. And people, other people who are stupidly aggressive about this. This is not hard to get. There are certain areas in life that we have designated as these are attempts for us to mix, mingle, and and be romantically interact with each other. We we set these aside. We have we, we make big deals out of them. I mean, yeah. you have bars and churches have things set up, and they have like you know speed dating and all. We deliberately do this, and the reason we deliberately do this with like nightclubs and all this other stuff is because every place else in life is not intended for that. I mean, if you happen to meet somebody and you happen cool. to start talking, but don't go out in life thinking I should be entitled to try to hit on people because what if I never see them again? Yeah. What if I never, I, this could be my only chance for love. No, it's not. Well, too bad. That's. And also like air travel is really fucking unpleasant anyway. <sighs> Imagine you. Okay. Here's the situation. You're in a seat. Someone starts hitting on you. You're not interested. You're now, trapped. Now you have three more hours right next to that Here's person. Here's the other side of that situation. You sit down next to someone. Wow, they're hot. You hit on them. They give you a fucking devastating takedown. You're trapped. You're trapped with your shame for the next however many hours. Yeah. Why would you, why would you do this to yourself? Why? Why? What is? Uh, I do not. Or they don't give you a devastating takedown. They just, you know what? No, thank you. Still awkward as fuck for the next few hours for everybody. And I don't. And, and the brand, it, they had to be told this. The person running the account, they they set up a contest and everything. <laughs> everybody, everybody piled on them to say no. No. no, they had to delete the tweet. And th their response was earlier today, we put out a tweet that was intended to celebrate Valentine's Day and spark some lighthearted chatter. We missed the mark. Sorry, everyone. Tweet has been deleted. I'm like, I hate flying. I'm a very nervous flyer. So you start hitting on me. Be like, listen, I just took a drama mean. I am waiting on a ginger ale. I'm not speaking to anybody right now. Once they bring me a ginger ale, I'm going to put Taylor Swift on my iPod and go to La La Land. <laughs> Until this thing is back on the fucking ground. Uh, so, yeah, every year, so, every year, every holiday, some brand has to do something. Uh, Brands are trying so hard to be people. Well, 
what happens when it's not the brand's call? That's our next story. Um, this comes to us from uh, Michigan. Yes, this is Michigan. Greenville, Michigan. Um, have you seen TikTok, Tara? Have you seen the kids, the TikToking? I am aware of TikTok. The, the kids. Actually, at the family Christmas party, all my cousin's daughters were like doing TikTok dances together. Yeah, tick, TikTok is, is the Vine replacement. Yeah. A new and company. All the were like trying to figure out what they were doing. Which, uh, and then is, my one cousin made us all do this clap thing and made a TikTok of her, all the old people in her family. It was actually funded by Tencent, which is an incredibly problematic uh, Chinese company. But let's not talk about that now. Um, some people, it, it's we're back to those days of of Vine and people trying to do what they can very quickly to become viral on on a very quick, fast, sharp platform that. You only have seconds to make an impression. Andy Warhol was wrong. In the future, everyone will be famous for 15 seconds. Yeah. So you, you got to make an impression. And, well, people are bad ideas. Bad, bad ideas. Um, Michigan Wendy's TikTok video shows a Wendy's employee taking a bath in the kitchen sink. Ew. Video posted last Tuesday on TikTok shows an employee at a Michigan Wendy's taking a bath in the kitchen sink. The video, which took place at Wendy's in Greenville, Michigan, according to uh, WOOD-TV uh, in Grand Rapids, showed an employee bathing himself in the store's power soak sink while co-workers play along laughing. They've since been fired. The brief unsavory clip, which was posted to TikTok with a caption, almost got fired for this shit. Uh, the unidentified man in the sink joked that it felt like being in a hot tub. One of the employees throw a sponge at him, commanding him to wash himself. He then threw what appeared to be a food pan in the bath with him. The original clip appears to have been removed from the platform, but not before it was recirculated on Facebook, amassing nearly 3,000 shares. The original poster's TikTok has been removed from the platform. Um, Wendy's employees involved in the incident were terminated for what a spokesman for the company describes as an egregious violation of health and safety regulations. Yeah. Yeah. You see, when when they were coming up with this, they're, they're they're sitting there going, "Well, why don't we do this?" Because there are about a hundred regulations that say why you don't do the same. Yeah, the same reason they make you wear the hairnets and the gloves and all the other crap. That's why. The same reason because nobody wants your ass sweat in their fries. The, the same reason that when the store closes, you're still there an hour later because you have to scrub down every freaking thing. And that's when did they have time to do this? Because I've worked a lot of food service in my day and there's never time. Yeah, I, I if you have time to lean, you have, if you have time to tick tock, you have time to clean. If you have time to completely disrobe, fill up a sink and get in it. <laughs> you don't even need to be on shift. Uh, fuck, when I work at Starbucks, they gave us 30 minutes to close from when the door locked to when we had to be the fuck out. And if it was longer than that, whoever closed got a call from the district manager. Why were you there late? You people don't like fun. We do like fun. We just also like clean food. Yeah, don't. I mean, I know it's a Wendy's, so I'm not <laughs> asking for the moon here. Okay. Just, I don't. But I would like to not have anybody's fucking swamp ass. Keep keep your genitals away from the utensils. How hard is that? You know, I mean, that's that's that that doesn't seem to be too much to ask, right? No, you wouldn't think. If you want to do this wacky stuff, you know, do it at home. You can do the stuff at home, but don't 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 do this. Don't don't do this. At the, get, yeah, everyone's like, get, sir, this is a Wendy's. Yep, that's exactly, exactly, sir. Yeah. This is, in fact, actually for real. <laughs> Has that meme been more appropriate? Sir, <laughs> this is a Wendy's. <sighs> also, having worked a lot of food service in my time, I'm here to tell you the soaps you're given, not good for your skin. The industrial soap that you wash the dishes with will burn right the fuck through your skin. You don't want to soak in it. All right. I sometimes, Tara, I tell you, I know these stories are going to make you angry. 
I know they are. You know, they they annoy me, but I know which ones specifically will just piss you right the fuck off. And with good reason. I'm not going to say you have no reason because this one, yep. Um, just it, yep. A male lawmaker worried women will abuse a tax break to hoard tampons. Yeah. Male lawmaker has no idea what tampons do. <laughs> Debate erupted this week in the Tennessee state legislature, legislature over the danger of women's buying too many tampons. Did I say women's? Women. I might as well have said women's. It's Tennessee. Uh, the concern came up during a hearing Tuesday about taxation of the product. Specifically, Democratic lawmakers in the state have proposed a bill to include tampons and other menstrual pro uh, products in Tennessee's mm -hmm. Yearly sales tax holiday, a three-day weekend where residents can buy things tax-free. Wait, so this isn't even to not tax them all the time. No, it's just for one week. This is to not tax them for three fucking days. Yeah. But State Senator Joey Hensley, a Republican, worried this might lead to out-of-control tampon buying. Quote, I would think since it's a sales tax holiday, there's really no limit on the number of items no anybody can purchase. I don't know how you would limit the number of items someone could purchase. Well, for one, um, stores do, in fact, say limit two per customer. They, that, that happens all yeah. the time. All the time. I, I, you've never, of course, you've never worked in retail, you trust fund motherfucker. Um, but secondly, again, I have to, I want to just sit them down and be like, what do you think tampons are? Right. Tampon, like, behind me? I have a giant drawer of lipstick. Yes. I probably got a hundred lipsticks in there. Yes. This guy here thinks I'm insane. I have a full drawer of lipstick. Tampons aren't lipstick. You don't buy them for fun. No. You don't buy them to go with different outfits. You buy them to shove them up your vagina <laughs> and soak up the wallpaper that your uterus is ripped down because you didn't give it a baby. I mean. They're not something you buy for fun. No woman would buy them if we didn't fucking have to. I, I just, it's. Maybe in the zombie apocalypse, we'll use them to plug up bullet holes. You know, the first thing I was thinking about, though, you see, you've seen Fury Road, right? Yeah. My friends do not become addicted to tampons. It's the first freaking thing I thought. And like, yeah, they're luxury tax. In most states, they're, they, they fall under a luxury tax. They're not a fucking luxury no. And I promise you, if men bled out of your fucking penises for five days a month, that shit would be free, uh, offered in every bathroom, and, like, required to just be anywhere you need it. Um, Associated Press reporter uh, Kimberly uh, Crucy noted that in his comment reminded her of, quote, the time NASA thought a woman needed 100 tampons for a week in space. <laughs> I mean again you just want to sit these guys down and go tell me what tampons do what do they do what's it's, the purpose of a tampon this is not a fun thing this is not like I mean the only reason I could think number one our, our, our educational system has completely failed that's number one number two it's like there's an association they must make because there are dispensers and bathrooms for tampons and there are dispensers and bathrooms for condoms. So I think they must have gotten their freaking wires crossed on that one. Yeah. Is is all. So. Because. A hundred ten. Yeah. NASA. Actual rocket scientists thought a woman would need a hundred tampons for a single week in space. I mean, I don't know what zero gravity does to a uterus. Still don't think you're going to need 100. But probably not, no. Mm. Not unless, like, you know, there's some radiation, cosmic rays, and the pressure gets increased. I don't know. Maybe they're counting on chest bursters and figured you'll just... Yeah, there you go. There you go. You'll be fine. Just hold still. Once the chest burster pops out, you'll just fill it up with super absorbent tampons. And, and you'll be fine. Be okay. You'll be fine. That'll, that'll hold you till we can get you back to Earth. 
just they're super absorbent and they've got the silky uh, applicator so you'll be just fine What and yet, f- speaking of the ones that you can buy out of public bathrooms, not good, not great. No, they're they're the they last come in resort. Basically, a miniature paper towel tube. Yeah, it's 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 the la- it's the same. Also, I should say condoms you can get out of the bathroom, not great. Yeah, and if you think about shoving a miniature paper towel tube mm-hmm. up your vagina, not great, not ideal. Uh, we we've. Uh, We've been doing this for a ridiculously long amount of time. And it's it's almost become now we have, we've have certain themes with these stories, certain recurring things that happen. Yeah. Now it's almost as if there are remixes. Where certain we're bits at that point where we're starting to get reboots? Well, no, where certain bits start mixing with other bits and it's like DJ Cumberbund and you know <laughs> we're getting mashups. We're getting mashups, yeah. Um Florida man gets naked to escape dealing store, ribeyes fall out of his pants. Not a great plan. So you're <sighs> Witnesses reported to police that in an attempt to get away, the suspect wriggled out of his clothes and got naked as meat packs began to fall out of his pants. That's what she said. A shoplifter trying to get away from a dealing store stripped naked and steaks tumbled out of his pants. Uh, Police found a Stephen Short, 28, of Dealand, running out of the store in the buff. When he refused, officers shot him with a taser. Incident occurred uh, 720 Friday at the (laughs) Save-A-Lot. Officers were dispatched to the... What? Just (laughs) Save-A-Lot. Down at the save a lot. Uh, officers were dispatched. Let's not st- save a hundred percent. No, no. Officers were dispatched to the store and told Short was being pinned to the ground by a manager and a civilian, but that he was fighting them. All right, number one, you're not supposed to do that. No. Anyone who has ever worked in retail, especially the freaking oh, manager, no. what's yeah. the rule? Every I'm gonna see if people in the channel know what the rule is. I, I just want to check this out. I want to see. What's the rule if you work in retail and someone is shoplifting? What do you do about it? Let's see here. Give give, give the channel a second or two to catch up. Um, yeah. All right. One says lock the door, stay cool, do nothing, nothing. Right. You, you, are, you do not confront or Customer touch them. Customer service the shit out of them. Yep. You let Recovery them. Recovery statements. Yeah. You see them steal a t-shirt. So you're like, can I show you some jeans to go with that t-shirt? So they know you saw what you they took. But you, work, but you, yeah. none of that is tackle them. No. You're not supposed to do that. That is, no. Yeah, you get passive aggressive. You can do that. It, it can't. Recovery statements are very passive aggressive. Yeah. And a civilian. So somebody else who didn't even work there decided to get involved. Someone like this guy. <sighs> just fucking spider monkeyed on him witness report to police that in, a, don't lie. in an attempt to get away short wriggled out of his clothes police say short stole four packs of ribeye steaks valued at 41 dollars so only 41 bucks and he put he himself tackled this man for 41 dollars yep short was charged with resisting an officer without violence resisting a store employee while committing theft and first degree petty theft last line of the story tara that's the one. I'm just let you read that one. <gasps> Short was taken to the hospital after it was discovered that a taser prong struck him in the genitals. <laughs> Man, that's gotta suck. <laughs> I'm Jeez, just so- like right to the balls. Normally, I don't laugh when people get hurt. We don't do that on the show, but when it's your own, the, the result of your own actions, you knew you, you should have. You know what the irony is? Yeah. If he kept his clothes on, that taser prong would have gone into a stake. He would have been armored. <laughs> Dick armor. He would have had ribeye codpiece. 
but nope, you're you're now you're in the hospital. Well, for they, a couple of steaks. With a, a, a well a well fried dick. Um Man, you know, I'm thinking about this. I saw a, a, a product that was available briefly and was taken. It, it went away once um, microwaves happened. It was an electric hot dog cooker. And what you did was it had two prongs on it. And you stuck a prong on either side and then you plugged it in the wall. It didn't have a switch. You plugged it in the wall and it just set electricity straight through the hot dog and cooked it. Look it up. Jeez. That's for Gave real. A hot dog of Prince Albert and then electrocuted it. Yes. It and then ate it. Yep. It's kinky. Yeah. That's what th- I, that's what I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> oh. Next up from the department of uh, this fucking guy. Um, a while back, we had a story about a dude who uh, was upset with his significant other. So he threw a bunch of nails on the street where he suspected the person he was she was cheating on him with lived. Yeah. Well, someone took that to the nth degree here. Uh That wasn't the nth degree? Man who repeatedly tossed handfuls of nails onto Oregon City streets gets 30 days in jail. Oregon City man who retaliated against drivers he deemed discourteous they by They named him Hmm? The, the nighttime, nighttime nailer. nailer, yes. Uh, by intentionally tossing roofing nails from his car onto busy streets dozens of times, was sentenced to Tuesday to 30 days in jail. Brett Michael Wilson, 57. And look at this dude. Look, look at look at the dude. Just look at that mugshot. Um, pled guilty last month to criminal mischief and four counts of disorderly conduct. Uh, Clackamas County City. City Sir Claxmas County Circuit Judge Susie Norby, I can say words, also ordered Wilson, who police dubbed the nighttime nailer, to pay more than two thousand in restitution and undergo a mental health evaluation. Um, he was a menace to Oregon City for years. Prosecutor Byron Brock told the uh, Oregonian, "Police lived in constant annoyance, as did motorists." According to Brock. Police documented dozens of cases in which cars were damaged by nails on the road. Uh, Oregon City authorities finally arrested Wilson in October after officers who were on the hunt for the nighttime nailer saw him chuck fistfuls of nails from his car as he drove along South Center Street before dawn. By Mr. Wilson's recollection, he has thrown nails over 50 times onto busy streets over the last couple of years. Wilson's early morning ritual, always done before sunrise, so as to avoid detection, was in response to drivers he felt were rude or had slighted him. Quote, it was his form of anger management. It made him feel better. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's what he said. You know those, I always wonder what happens to those people who never quite become serial killers. <laughs> They're almost there. They're just underachievers. Yeah, this is like, this dude was like, has all the behavior of a serial killer. He has a ritual. He he picks his victims. He has a certain time of day. So this dude just kept a bucket of nails in his car. Mm -hmm. And if somebody pissed him off, Mm -hmm. he would reach into his bucket of nails and toss them out the window. Yep. It's like almost a serial killer, but not quite the ambition. That only works on people who piss you off behind you. What if someone cuts you off? I guess you got to cut them off back. But then wouldn't you become the very thing you hate? <laughs> also, what does his paint job look like? Yeah, I wonder how many you know keys. Some of those fuckers bounced. Hmm. Um... Yeah, the man told Oregon police he would buy forty buck forty dollar buckets of nails at Home Depot um, to cover his tracks. Often Wilson would go through three buckets of nails in a few months. Quote, he called it random acts of kindness. This is just like 
I'm just thinking of the, the SNL bit that I know you don't watch SNL, but the what male rage, what male rage. This is just like a fucking boomer with so much suppressed rage. Right. Like, dude, get some fucking therapy. Right. Take some kickboxing. Man, I hate, I am. Write a poem. Anyone who has ever ridden in a car with me for a length of time will know I have that problem or I will yell at people who can't hear me. Yeah. I will be driving and someone will do something. Someone will drive aggressively, which I hate. And I will start. I will start having like, man, you shouldn't have freaking. Driving in New Jersey was very hard for Dan. Yeah. Because he started driving and then he was like, oh, I'm going to move to the asshole part of the country. There is no polite part of the country. That's bull crap. People are fucking polite in Missouri. People are fucking polite here. It's weird. I live in the alleged you polite turn on part your of the blinker country. And they just let you in here. It's, it freaks me out. Okay, yeah, that's true. People actually do what the blinker is supposed to do. Yeah, yeah Jersey, not so much. People wave, wave at you as you drive by. So you Jersey put, was hard on Dan. You put too many talking monkeys in the same place. Shit like that starts to happen. But, like, he didn't get to the point where he was chucking nails at people out the window. <laughs> Yeah, well, you didn't give him enough time. He just I mean, this a bunch dude, of curses and go about his day. This dude's 57. Dan had some more years to go. True. He, he, he didn't let him marinate long enough. <laughs> but, like, where, this takes place in Oregon. Oregon, yeah. <laughs> Dan would just blow them up. No, I wouldn't. Not publicly. <laughs> Not a statement I will make on the record on the internet. Uh, we can either confirm or deny. We've got one more tonight that is just absolute sheer stupidity. I, I we we have seen variants of this before, but this one just blows my mind. Ah. <sighs> from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota, eh? Man falls through ice and river, says Google Maps, told him to cross river. Okay. A man who was making his way back to Minneapolis Hotel around 3 a.m. Saturday tried to cross the icy Mississippi River near the Stone Arch Bridge and fell partly through the ice. Told fire crews that rescued him that his Google Maps directed him to cross the river. Uh, Minneapolis Fire Department spokesman Brian Tyner, who uh, speculated the man misinterpreted the directions and should have crossed the bridge instead. Yeah, probably didn't mean for you to like skate. It's it's the, oh you can drive on it now. Oh wow, what do they think of next? That's that's awesome. I mean, I, like, you remember when Apple released Apple Maps, mm -hmm. and it was literally telling people to drive into the ocean because it was a shitty app. <laughs> yes. And also, it probably and didn't like them. Every iPhone comes with a standard, and everybody deletes it and loads up Google Maps or Waze mm -hmm. because it's a shitty app. Yep. But even if Google, like, Google Maps fucks up sometimes, they don't know everything. Fun I fact. Know it seems like they do. Google owns, fun fact, Google owns Waze, so it's technically the same thing. But... The illusion of competition. It seems like they know everything, but they don't. They fuck no, no. up sometimes. You don't have to do what they tell you. Long ago, I have said, don't don't listen to the talkie box. Don't. I had, I I've I've talked about this one in the early era of of GPS when I was working. The company put a GPS in my car, and it told me to drive through trees, just like directly into trees. You and don't I'm, have to do what it tells you. No, it, you're not legally obligated. No, you're not going to be arrested if you don't obey the talkie box. It's also not a valid defense. <laughs> no, well, it's Google Maps said to go this way. It's a one way. I know, but Google Maps said to go this way. Now it work. You can't absolve yourself of responsibility because you're an imbecile. No, you cannot blame the M. You have to add some critical. You have to put in some critical thinking to what you're doing. I mean, I've. I've driven around sometimes and I miss a direction and yeah. I don't immediately go, oh, fuck, and try. I'm like, well, 
crap, I'll just have to wait, turn around. And just, you have to think about what you're doing because you are driving around in a couple tons of steel at a high and velocity. So, so is everybody around you. And there's no bumpers on them. Although I think that would solve a lot of society's problems if we just put bumpers on all of the cars on the road. But we don't have it yet. No, Tara, if you put bumpers on cars, people would start playing bumper cars. Yeah, but nobody would get hurt because there'd be bumpers. When I'm president, all cars will be bumper cars. And we'll be a happier society. You watch. How do you think collision works, Tara? <laughs> I mean... Well, it'll cut things down. I mean, like you cut someone <laughs> off, you'll just bounce off each other and then you'll bounce off the next guy and everybody will laugh. And it's, not, it's not like flubber, Tara. It's not, it's not, that's not how that would, that's not how that would work. Well, when I'm president, it will be. Oh, <laughs> uh, it will take so long to get anywhere. Yes. <laughs> All cars will be made out of the gelatinous cube from D and D. So if you hit somebody, your cars will be incorporated with one another, and then you're stuck with them for life. So you should drive really carefully. <laughs> oh, I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week is you are not obligated to obey your GPS. No, we're and not there yet. Google is not our overlord yet. Yet. I mean, give, give it, it 20 years. Yeah, you're going to have to do whatever Google says. But for now, you keep having this optimistic timeline. I'd say give it five years. But, you know, for now, we're still the dominant species. The, the AI allegedly. hasn't taken over yet. Allegedly. Um, we have learned that if you find yourself uh, undergoing some sort of ritualistic, aggressive criminal behavior, it's time to stop. Yeah. You need to, you need help. If, if you were like, man, it's like he, he went to bought the nails out of town to cover his tracks and had a ritual. And, you should and, have a Snickers. Seriously. Fucking. This, uh, we've learned that. Look, number one, don't chase the shoplifters. Don't do that. Yeah. And number two, look, just. If you if they've caught you, just they've take caught the you. Just take the L. Otherwise, you're getting your your dicks getting electrified, man. I don't know what to tell you. And nobody wants an electrified dick. I mean, some people do. Yes, that is an actual fetish. <laughs> so you say that, but most people don't want an electrified dick. Certainly not in the save a lot. Um, we've learned that not only do a disproportionate number of men not grasp the concept of tampons. Some of them will learn about how tampons work for the very first time by watching this video. Yeah, someone said I should do sex ed videos. <clears throat> it's a frightening concept. So someone's going to, someone's going, some dude is going to be like, oh, wait, what? What? I thought they were like vibrators. What? I thought it was like one of those, one of those special sponges for putting on your makeup, you know? <laughs> no. Um... We jam them up our vaginas to stop the bleeding. Not even to stop the bleeding, to absorb the bleeding. That's I, what we do with them. It's not fun. You have just done more work than a uh, public school health teacher, Tara. Right there. You've done a whole lot. Yeah, I know. Um, we've learned that if you work in food service, keep your genitals away from everything. 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 Anything in your job. Just keep your naughty bits away from it. Yep. Yeah. Anything that you have norm that is legally required to be covered in some sort of clothing should not come in contact with. You know what? I think that's pretty much. I was going to say just about every job, but no, there are some jobs. There are some jobs, but there are some jobs where that is your job, and that's fine. If you work at Wendy's, that's not your job. That's not your job. That is that is even if even if they tell you to go fuck yourself, that's not your job. I know you're trying to please them customer service, but. No. Not your job. Um, and finally this week we've learned that brands should stop. Yeah. 
I think that you I, should stop trying to people. Yep. Yeah, you're you're not you're not good at it. You're not good at it. It's 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 also it's this weird dysfunction too, because not just one person speaks for the brand. So it's like this weird amalgam gestalt entity that occasionally yeah. has that says things. And it could say anything at any given time. Because anyone could speak for the brand so long as they have control of the it's like the talking stick, but for the brand. You have become like the, the brand. What's the alien from Babylon 5 that's just like smoke in a suit? Vorlons? Vorlon, yeah. Yeah. That's the brand Twitter. <laughs> it's smoke in a suit. Anybody can be in the suit. That's right. Uh, you know what? I do. Kosh. Kosh. That's the guy. I do, I, I do love that you went there, though. I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. And now some 10-year-old in the chat who should be watching this is going to be saying, what's Babylon 5? 